I'm wearing a hat. Have y'all seen this video? Tweety was shocked. He says he doesn't recognize the woman or know why she did it, but filed a report with Broomfield Police. The lady just does an extremely mean crime for no reason. She got absolutely nothing out of it. Obviously, this is a terrible crime. However, if it happened to me, I'd be a little less upset than most because I personally drive a 2003 Jeep Wrangler. It's my baby. I love it. It has a lot of character, I guess you could call it. Little dings, nicks, and scratches that I put all over it from the time that I lived on a farm or when I would go off-roading with my buddies under bridges. However, there was one thing that happens that I've always heard about but never thought anybody would actually do. And of course it happened to me. Yeah, somebody cut my back window into a big smiley face and didn't even take anything. I wasn't carrying anything important inside, but you could tell by the dust that they would have reached in and they didn't. They did it for no good reason and it completely just ticked me off. What's worse and kind of violating is I didn't know where this happened. It could have happened at my apartment complex I was living at at the time or at my job. I was just on my way to Whataburger one day and saw it was flapping in the wind. I saw this video of the Tesla and it reminded me of all those feelings of anger and just how upset that I was that someone would just do this out of the pure evil in their heart. And I thought to myself, how can I fix this? My plan is to make a security system similar to the Tesla's that's going to be powered by a Raspberry Pi. The first step in all this was thinking of the parts that I need. I of course needed a Raspberry Pi with accompanying camera, a couple buck converters, one to take the 12 volts that's running through my car down to 6 volts to charge the battery back up, and another to take that 6 volts down to 5 volts to power the Raspberry Pi and make sure nothing gets fried. I'm still debating on what I'm going to go with for the battery backup. I'm pretty sure I'm going to just take a simple lead acid rechargeable battery like one that's used in emergency exit signs. Those are relatively safe and I feel a lot more comfortable knowing that that would be under the back seat of my vehicle instead of some lithium ion battery that I make. In the process of making this video, if I come across a safe enough 5 volt alternative, I have this, which takes 12 volts down to 5 volts to power the 5 volt battery back up, and then there's no need for another buck converter. Having multiple buck converters in this system obviously decreases the efficiency, so if I can go with this option, that would be much better. I'll have affiliate links in the description below if any of you want to buy this stuff. All right, this is what I've got going on. I've got a six volt battery into it. I have plugged in one of the buck converters that takes six volts down to five volts, and I'm gonna test and see if the whole system can run off of it. Cool. If anyone out there has an extra TS100 or wants to donate one, that would be awesome. First thing I'm going to solder up is going to be the 12 volt to 6 volt buck converter. Cool. Hello. Hello. Hey, babe. Uh, it's just like Chick Fil A is one of those places that like they don't really have an excuse not to be fast, you know, because they have chicken and chicken. Hey. Nice. All right, maybe I can explain this a little better now. It starts at the car battery. Hold on. Or right, so it starts at the car battery at 12 volts. Running through editing of this video, I realize I haven't explained why I'm doing a whole battery backup system in the first place. Pretty simple, I don't want to kill my car battery. And the second thing, how am I going to limit when this 6 volt battery is going to be charged from the 12 volt battery? Under the backseat of my Jeep, I actually have a speaker amplifier. The amplifier runs off of 12 volts and it only gets power from the battery when the key is turned to the on position via a relay. So just in case anything short circuits or if I just leave the system on for way too long, it's not going to kill my car battery, it'll just kill the little backup battery. And the backup battery will only get charged when I turn the key to the on position. Alright, that's it. Thank you which goes to a buck converter that changes it to 6 volts. The end of the buck converter is going to go two different directions. It's going to run in parallel. One of them is going to go to the battery backup, which is going to be charged from this at 6 volts. The second end of this buck converter is going to run parallel to the battery backup, and it's going to go to this second buck converter, which takes the incoming 6 volts and makes it a consistent 5 volts to make sure I don't fry anything in the Raspberry Pi. And lastly, the Raspberry Pi is going to be running a software which I can use to manage all the footage in my security surveillance system, and it's going to power this this little camera. So now that I've got the whole thing hooked up, let's see how much current it's drawing. Averaging out about 300 milliamps, so 0.3 amps. Doing some quick math, uh, 0.3 times 6 volts, it's like uh, 1.8 watts. And the 6 volt battery is a 4 amp hour battery, so 4 times 6, 24 watt hours. This thing's pulling 2 watts, so this thing can run for, call it 12 hours. It's not the best, it could it could probably be better if I use like a Pi Zero W or something that drew less current. It should charge quite a bit when I drive, so 
Yeah, we'll figure it out. So I ran into a problem, of course. It's broken. Don't buy cheap stuff. Alrighty, new camera is in. Let's see how it looks. Ooh. Hey. All right, cool, I got it working. You can see, I have it plugged in, and this is being powered completely off of the battery right now. So this thing is portable, I can go take it outside. And what's cool is it's a fisheye lens, so I can come all the way to here, and that lens can still see me. And by the way, the software that I'm using to control all of this is just, it's a free software on the Raspberry Pi called My iOS. I'll have it linked below. Now that I got the software figured out and the hardware roughed out, I'm gonna go install it in my Jeep. Can you see me right there? I don't know how I'm gonna get this in an angle. Is this a good angle? Okay, after fighting forever to get my seat up, this is what I'm looking at. This is the amp that I'm gonna plug it into. I hope you can see that there's a 12 volt and a ground and that's what I'm gonna tap into. It is so hot. All right, I've got the thing wired up and plugged in and the key is in the on position so it should be sending a feed through this camera now. I thought the video looked a little choppy on those last shots that I took. Turns out the frame rate got turned down to 15. I'm sweating way too much to reshoot that so I'm sorry if it looks a little bad. Right now I've got the seat back up. You're actually in the very back on top of my speaker box and I'm gonna put the camera here and just stick it to this with double-sided tape. I think that looks pretty good. I got it finished up but they're ruining my shot. As you can see, before I got rudely interrupted by the ambulance, I got the camera working. Right now it's running on the backup battery, and tomorrow, when I turn on my vehicle to send power to my amp, the battery's gonna get charged by this 12 volt to 6 volt and 6 volt to 5. The focus of this was just to make a portable surveillance system for my vehicle, and it turned out way cooler than that. Because when I park close enough, I can actually see the footage live, as opposed to just the normal motion detection files that are gonna get uploaded to my computer. Oh yeah, that's what makes it cool. Since this is wireless, I can wirelessly send all the files at the end of the day from the Raspberry Pi to my computer. Ways that I can see the system being upgraded Upgraded. One, a larger battery so it can last longer. Two would be more cameras. I can actually add up to four more cameras, just plug them into the USB on the Raspberry Pi and spread them out around my vehicle, much like a Tesla. And three, go more into the programming of maybe making a relay switch when the backup battery gets low enough, it'll charge it from the 12 volt battery as to not kill it completely. I don't know, consider this open source, you can do with it what you want. Also, I don't really feel comfortable enough with the My iOS software to tell you what to do with it. There's plenty of videos out there with people explaining it much better than I ever could. I'll make sure to link one or two of those in the video description below. And I'd say that's about it. If you like this content, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell so you can actually get notified of my videos because I have a thousand subscribers but only get like 400. I really do appreciate every single one of you for watching through this and I hope you enjoyed it. And the moral of the story, don't be a complete